everyone. We are impressed when we see on the telly a long since deceased person making a speech while they were still alive, speaking from beyond the grave as it were. The person may be dead but their words are alive. I think maybe Martin Luther's speech way back in 1968, I have a dream speech. Maybe that kind of uh, was fulfilled when President Obama became president. That might be a good example. Well, it's the Holy Spirit who brings alive the words of Jesus in the Bible and makes them applicable to the present. The Spirit brings the past into the full light of the present and prepares us for the future. In imparting the Spirit to the Apostles, Jesus breathes on them, it said. We often use the same language when things begin to stagnate. Your marriage, for instance, might be showing signs of stagnation, or my priesthood becoming stale and insipid. In situations like this, you often hear the expression, What is needed here is for someone to breathe new life into the situation. In this sense, we associate the Holy Spirit with renewal or rejuvenation. The Holy Father said last year, I need the constant outpouring of the Holy Spirit if my spiritual life is not to stagnate. I believe inertia and sin are two signs of the one coin. The Spirit calls us to a deeper repentance. When we talk about growing in the life of the Spirit, it presumes that we have put paid to deep-seated and seated patterns of selfishness in our lives. As St. Paul says in his letter to the Galatians, If you are guided by the Spirit, you will be in no danger of yielding to self-indulgence, since self-indulgence is the opposite of the Spirit. Some people associate the Holy Spirit with over-the-top goings-on. It's not about us swinging in the aisles or working ourselves up into a kind of spiritual or emotional frenzy. This can more often than not masquerade the presence of the Holy Spirit. A true sign of the Spirit's anointing is when we love and feel close to our Lord in our everyday lives. Being guided by the Spirit doesn't mean we take shortcuts to God's kingdom. The love of God may be poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit, but that love has to be lived out in the nitty-gritty and ordinariness of everyday life. At Pentecost, the Holy Spirit was given to the nation church as Jesus promised before his resurrection. Now, the late Cardinal Suenans, quite a charismatic figure in his day, described what the Church might be like if the Holy Spirit is kept at bay or restricted in his influence. This is what he says. Without the Holy Spirit, God is far away. Christ stays in the past. The Gospel is a dead letter. The Church is a mere institution just furthering its own ends. The Mass is boring. Morality is a slavish adherence just to rules. No wonder people leave a church like that. But with the Holy Spirit, God is near. Christ is in the present. The Gospel is the living Word of God which I have made my own. With the Holy Spirit, the church is a faith-filled community. And when I follow the church's teaching on difficult subjects, I'm not slavishly adhering to rules, but inwardly freed to live as Jesus taught. With the Holy Spirit, my life is characterized by joy, even in the midst of turmoil. With this in mind, we pray all the more earnestly. Come, Holy Spirit. Fill the hearts of your faithful and enkindle in them the fire of your divine love. Send forth your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Well now, here are a few questions to ask yourselves. First, 
In what areas of the church today do we need the breath of the Holy Spirit more than ever? Second, what ways can people become spiritually stagnant in their personal lives? Third, why do these happy clappy churches attract more people than the more traditional churches? Are they playing more on people's emotions? Fourth, when being moral is like slave labour, are we overdue for a new outpouring of the Holy Spirit so that our moral decisions become part of who we are and not rules imposed on us from the outside? Now, how would you answer these questions? Thank you all for listening to me and God bless you all. Oh